What's going on, Internet? Scott here. I'm here with Steve Sansweet. Hey, Scott. From Rancho Obi-Wan, celebrating May the 4th. May the 4th? Yes, May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. May the 4th be with you. And we're here because you have probably the largest privately owned Star Wars collection. Yeah, ever. and now we've turned it into a non-profit museum, too. You want to take a look? I absolutely do want to okay, take a look. Okay, let's... Uh, I think the orchestra is a little it's slow or something. Let me see if I can okay. get their attention. Oh. oh. <laughs> wow! I just want to soak this in. <laughs> this is amazing. I never would have known that this was in here from the outside. Well, it's... It's a former chicken barn. Yeah. Wow. I mean, up until the early 1970s, there were about 20,000 chickens in here. Wow. And I think we're still sort of haunted by chicken souls every now and then, but <laughs> I don't know. All right, well, show me around. Okay. You gotta get people excited at the very beginning. Right. So we hire a band that comes here and, and plays for us. So. <laughs> Feel free. Yeah. You're a little stiff, Scott. I'm just doing what the, I'm oh. following their lead. <laughs> you look a little like a certain droid. That is the actual door. That? From the cantina. These are, These are uh, cantina masks made from the original mold. So we have the Duros, who then became Cad Bane in the Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. Unmade hands, and then this is the given, and that uh, that was a character behind the scenes. We've got pieces of the crate dragon bone, which they left in the dunes. Um, some 3PO hands, one used, one not used. Piece of the Millennium Falcon, the 60 foot in diameter, 20 ton Millennium Falcon, uh, that was destroyed after Return of the Jedi. Anthony Daniels, 3PO, walked through the trash heap and. And took some out. pieces and gave some phony names and uh, yes wow. and then over here on the vader costume i put together it three different times and a lot of fans are amazing the research that they do and so we're virtually certain that the leather under costume the woolen under cape the cod piece which has a costumer's tag were actually screen used in star wars really the helmet and mask were screen used in the empire strikes back and the rest is part of an appearance costume Wow. Now, I, I, I don't want to disillusion you, but they actually didn't use neon lightsabers. No. But I have a stunt lightsaber wow. from the Empire Strikes Back. So this was used to train Mark Hamill. And, um, and actually, there is a scene in Star Wars, which I think George maybe finally um, sort of changed, where Obi-Wan in Star Wars is walking down the hallway towards Darth Vader. He's holding the lightsaber like this, and you can actually see the white tube. Oh, really? So I think he's finally fixed that, although, uh, yeah, so um, wow. we're prepared to do battle. You know, this thing is um, carbon fiber, and <laughs> you can feel it. Yeah, you can really feel it. Now, one of my favorite things, Okay. bootleg action figures. Yeah, I love bootleg action so, figures. So this is from Turkey. They thought they could get away with it because it wasn't Star Wars. Oh, it was oh, Star's War. Star's War. Star's War. Plus, Darth Vader, at yeah. Driver, Darth Vader, at yeah. Driver, Chewbacca. Chewbacca. And you remember the, the horde of troopers that came and invaded the rebel base on Hoth. The, uh, the Blue oh, yeah, Stars. Oh yeah, the Blue Stars. Yeah, oh, the Blue Stars were terrible. Yeah, awful. But my favorite, is the Imperial Gunner, because this is the guy who was at the controls of the laser cannon mm -hmm. that destroyed Alderaan and was about to destroy Yavin 4. And you can see the high technology oh, because he's Yeah, that he's, he's, he's on a calculator. It's a 1983 calculator, <laughs> <laughs> which I... That's, so that's why the Death Star blew up so easily. It was just I think so. Their, their technology gotcha. was a little gotcha. uh, little backward there, but you know, what the heck. But this is, this so, is fan made. So do you think with things like 3D printers becoming more and more normal in the, in the fan community, are you gonna see more and more of these fan Yeah, I think so far we haven't seen anything. I think mm -hmm. 3D printers are so new, but I think uh, the whole concept of 3D printers is going to change a lot. And I think one of the things you have to, there are some people out there who deliberately make counterfeits mm -hmm. and try, I mean, even now without 3D printers, this guy is very open about what this is. Right. Um, but there are people who have tried to bootleg missile firing Boba Fetts 
And so 3D printers is going to make, especially when they get even better than they are now, yeah. is going to make it very difficult for some people to figure out exactly what it is. It's almost like you know putting it on a copying machine and making an exactly. exact copy. Um, then again, there could be a whole new industry out of that too mm -hmm. once the prices get down even more, although right. they're pretty good right now. Right. Now this is right up your alley. Yes, so you all must, right, puppets. You, you must take some off and. Uh, uh, well, I gotta. Do you mind if I take the? No, uh, no whichever My favorite one's... Chewy. Yes. Yes, he's my favorite. I love Chewy. All right, let's put this on. So it actually came with. It came uh, with rods. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was yeah, looking yeah. for the rods. <laughs> Is that, do you think you could work the tours? Because that would be really cool to have. Second job. <laughs> Hi, Chewy. Oh, really good. Yep. Nice. It's the first time he's come alive. Nice boy. That's cool. When did you decide to make the, the switch from, because you worked at the Wall Street Journal. When did you just go full-blown I, full I worked at the Wars? Journal for 26 years, the last nine of which I was a, uh, a, um, a bureau chief. And I had already started to write Star Wars books at the time, mm -hmm. do some QVC shows. And I got a call out of the blue from Lucasfilm in 95 saying, um, do you know anybody who might be interested? It's just a one-year job, positively. It was about a third of the salary that I was making, mm -hmm. and it was to go out and talk to Star Wars fans all over the country to tell them about the special editions. And of course, that was the silliest thing in the world when I said, let's talk. <laughs> and it had been time to do something else at the journal. The normal mm -hmm. length of time for bureau chief was like three years, and I was there nine years. Right. So they wanted me to go back to New York or become a super reporter or something. And um, I just followed my bliss. Yeah. And as Joseph Campbell said, and... Um, uh, never looked back, and I was there for 15 years, and I'm still a consultant. The one and only R2 Mr. T2 <laughs> from the Conan O'Brien show in 2009 when George was on, and they wanted to have something that would make him laugh, so they did a couple of things, and uh, Lucasfilm couldn't lend them one of the expensive <laughs> real R2s. They didn't need it to move, so I said I had a very lightweight one. I said, the only stipulation is you have to give it back to me exactly the way that you tricked it out. So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, take a quick look at the library, which is one of my favorite rooms. When we remodeled, we expanded this. So we have all the English language books in here and foreign language books. We have books in oh, 34 languages, 37 countries, plus Braille. Um, just. You know, at one point when I did uh, the first Star Wars Encyclopedia in 97, mm -hmm. I had read every single book and comic up to then. And then it sort of exploded after that. So when we did the complete Star Wars Encyclopedia 10 years later, I had to have six people uh, help out on so it. So you're cause... saying you know a lot about the expanded universe. Uh, yeah. It's time for America's favorite new game show. Is it a Star Wars character or is it an Indian food? <laughs> Grugash Vundar or Groud Seek? Which one is a Star Wars character and which one is an Indian food? Groud Seek. Groud Seek is what? Star Wars character. Groud Seek is an Indian food. <laughs> What's the first one? Grugash Vundar. I should have read that. That's expanded that. universe. All right. Sal Karoth or Dal Bafla? Sal Karoth is the Star Wars character. Yes. Yes. Dal Bafla is, is an Indian food. I don't know that I could eat any of that. You see, you really have me because I can't eat Indian yeah. food. It's a little too spicy. Well, I mean, for what, me. tastes, what tastes better to you? Grunbog or Rogan Gash? Rogan Gosh would not taste good to me because he's a Star Wars character. No? No, Rogan Gosh is an Indian food. That would taste delicious. This I don't know. I think I better expand my uh, your uh, dining. Your, 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 uh, yes, yes. yes uh, you need to eat like more that. Indian food. Yeah. There you have it. Another edition of America's Favorite Game Show. And I lost. Is it a Star Wars character or is it an Indian food? This is from a French licensee named Atticus, and the photos were amazing, and I got it. There was no lighting in it. You couldn't see the detail. It was disappointing. And so I hired Randy, and he came here for a day, and he lighted it, and now it's gone from disappointing to one of my favorite pieces. 
um, it makes all the difference in the world. Oh, totally. And then you can see light coming from here, so you want to look in and see Ben and Darth going at it. And then, of course, metal figures also separately. <laughs> Just like better. Yeah, this is like a real version of, of all the scenes you would see on the boxes it, and try and recreate in your backyard. Yeah, it's it incredible. I mean, the cockpit comes wow. off so you can see the details in there. Yeah, the lighting really does make it. Yeah. It it's, really does. It's it totally sets different. it off. Yeah. It's so cool. Now we'll take you in this direction okay. to see some original pieces from the Death Star. Ooh. Both from the surface and from the trench side. And you can see this piece actually had some pyrotechnic damage on oh, it. Oh, yeah. So right something there. was close to yeah. it. Yeah. And the funniest thing when I got these originally was realizing they had done what I call Potemkin towers. So they're just like a two-sided mm -hmm. painted tower that they would use on the periphery. You'll never see it in the movie, of course, but it's that feeling that it's all full and, and there's a lot there. And it's uh, Isn't it? the techniques they yeah. use. It's amazing when you see movie props and, and pieces of sets like this up close and you're like, yep. oh, just looks like, yeah, like you can actually you can actually like, make out the pieces they use from everyday objects and spray painted but yeah, and, you know when it's and, and pieces that are on ships exactly and, yeah. and when you look at it when you look at it up close you're like oh I know what that is yeah. I know exactly what that is but yeah. then when you see it as a whole it's it makes magic. sense. Yeah it makes it's sense. Movie magic. And and this was the museum um, mm -hmm. and I, um, I ran out of space and um, and There's then more? I had these well just a little more Oh my, what? So welcome to the Tonti 4 come on up. I've got to tell you that sometimes we get imperial interference. <laughs> let me handle it, okay. because I'm, right. I'm used to it. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> wow! And then back here was something called the Vader Project. And so these were a hundred unpainted Vader helmets that went out to artists all over the world. They could do whatever they wanted with them. Um, a, the spiked helmet in the back was one of the uh, um, pieces that were on the cover of the auction catalog. Mm -hmm. And this is, I mean, very clever. Death Starry Night, Vincent Van Gogh, and uh, just all kinds of uh, marvelous creativity. Um, over here we've got the chair, one of the chairs from the pilot's cabin of the um, all the wrong cruiser at the end of episode three. You can actually sit on it. We say, yeah, don't sit, take that, on, take that museum on. sign. I'm gonna. Sit okay, on. so are you the pilot? Are yes, you? Yes, uh, I am the pilot. Okay. Yes. So you need to follow all of my instructions. And that was uh, actually Jeremy Bullock who played Boba Fett in the in the classic trilogy. So wow. uh, finally got to be unmasked. Can we see? Oh this yes, of course. How could I forget the arcade? This is what we came here for. So. Whoa! About half the things work. Oh yeah, sit down Jedi game is really Never cool. seen a sit down yeah. Jedi before. It's unusual. I thought it was just a remake until I until I mean, you see this. Yeah, yeah. This was actually made for yeah. this game. Because this was because I know the Empire was just it was just a sticker they slapped on the old Star Wars and then this right they changed the, the motherboard and then there's some actual games that you know go back and forth with uh, one machine, but um, yeah, this is my favorite. This is this is it's very cool. my friend has one of these and it's, I'm of course I'm, you can't win. You can't, but On that's what's great games, about it. Yeah. That's what's great about it. It so just then continues we, to loop. We've got some slot machine toppers from Las Vegas. You can't get the actual machines because you need a gambling license to do that. All right. Well, that's is that is that all we is have? that all yeah is well, that all well you've seen about maybe oh five or six percent of the collection mm -hmm. so you know we try to change it up every now and then that gives me some of the fun too and then sometimes we take it on the road like last year we went to Orlando for Celebration Six mm -hmm. and this year we're going to Germany for a Celebration Europe Two we're gonna have about an eight hundred square foot booth and we'll bring a bunch of stuff from Rancho Obi-Wan that'll be in transit for two months. Ooh. So, um, yeah, it'll be fun. Right. And people can take tours if they like? People can take tours. You can get online at www.ranchoobiwan.org. We do tours uh, Mondays, Fridays, and Saturdays. And um, uh, people have fun. Yeah. And I have was, fun doing I had it. a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank Man, you. And you, you got the abbreviated tour. I, 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 abbreviated tour, but it was the best tour I've been on ever. Ever. So oh, thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Steve. May the 4th be with you. And with you. Yes. Happy May the 4th, everyone. And for more tech feed, make sure to subscribe to the channel, comment, and uh, yeah.
May the fourth be with you.